Prioritizing these three ingredients is key for why my clients have been able to overcome years of struggling to get pregnant and finally conceive their baby, especially when they have been told that they either need IVF or even donor eggs. Now, the framework that we use inside of my coaching program is called the Three Fertile Element Framework, and it has helped my clients regulate their cycles, strengthen their ovulation, increase egg quality, balance their hormones, estrogen and progesterone, and optimize their uterine lining in order to increase their chances of conceiving while also decreasing the risk of miscarriage. What this framework essentially allows you to do is build this foundation of fertility from the ground up, from the inside out. Because here's the thing, we always want to be leveraging our own body's innate blueprint to conceive. Your body knows best. Your body wants to be healthy. It wants to be balanced. It wants to conceive your baby. We just need to ask the questions, what ingredients are you missing in order to carry out this blueprint? And so that's exactly what I'm going to show you today. Now, this framework has allowed my clients to conceive naturally and currently our historical success rate is 83 percent of women inside of our program do conceive their healthy happy babies in four to six months of starting the program despite years of struggling on their own or even failed past treatments but i know how overwhelming it can be when you're trying to research all of this stuff on your own and it doesn't seem like anything really fits together and there's just all this scattered advice put together so go ahead and hit that like button if you feel frozen when it comes to trying to figure out what your body needs in order to conceive your baby because i'm going to walk you through a process today that i feel like is really going to open your eyes to a new approach to optimizing your fertility so that it becomes so easy for you to understand which piece you are missing in your fertility strategy so that you can start to feel relaxed and relieved knowing that you are doing everything right on this fertility journey and you have all of your bases covered. Hi, welcome back. My name is Stasha and it is my soul's purpose to help women who are struggling and burnt out on their fertility journey to finally take back their power, heal their body, trust their intuition, and not only conceive their healthy, happy baby, but become that next level version of themselves in the process. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button below and join the movement. Now, today we're gonna to be talking all about optimizing your fertility. And the biggest mistake that I see women make here and even most fertility doctors make is that we think that fertility is only about the physical components. And so we get really hyper-focused on things like hormone tests and HSGs and ultrasounds and testing your ovulation with LH strips. And in fact, fertility is none of those things, right? Those are just a very reduced way of trying to understand the singular parts that make up the grand ecosystem. And from my experience, it's way more accurate to think of fertility as this ecosystem with all of these different factors interconnected and working synergistically with each other towards one goal. This is what I call a whole body functional approach to fertility because we are taking the entire body, not just the physical body, but the mental, emotional, and spiritual body and we're taking that all into account when it comes to optimizing your fertility. Whereas in the conventional way of looking at fertility, it's zooming in on very small aspects that when we have blinders on looking at these markers, we really don't have the context to know, does this need to be higher? Does this need to be lower? How is it influencing the rest of the equation? An analogy that I like to use is that the conventional approach is more like a game of whack-a-mole, right? And it's this perpetual, frantic, trying to bop the mole as symptoms come up, as blood tests reveal there's an imbalance here, as an HSG reveals a blocked fallopian tube, all of these things are coming up and you're playing whack-a-mole trying to fix that issue. Whereas a functional approach is more like a game of dominoes. Yes, it may take a little bit of time to set up all of those dominoes, 
But once you're ready to go, all the effort that is required on your part is to flip that one starting domino and watch the entire interconnected, beautiful system fall in exactly the way that it should. This is analogous to asking your body exactly what it needs, putting that into place, and then watching your body play out that interconnected catalyst process that it already knows how to do. And so we get to get out of the way and watch our body work its magic. Now, I don't know about you, but I've spent enough years trying to play the whack-a-mole game with the health of my body. With every little symptom, especially when it comes to my cycle health and my ovulation and my egg quality and hormone balance, it wasn't until I finally tapped into this new approach to heal my body and trust in my body's ability to heal itself and become more fertile, that is when everything changed. That is when I was able to lean back, trust in the process, and actually enjoy my fertility journey because I saw things starting to progress. I saw things starting to regulate and become more robust, and my ovulation was getting stronger and stronger, and my luteal phase was getting longer and longer, and that is when I was able to conceive my baby after a year of trying everything else. Now, Western medicine wants you to believe that your body is broken that it's missing parts, that it doesn't know what it's doing, that you can't trust it. And instead, you need these medications and these treatments in order to force it to mature follicles, force it to ovulate, force it to grow a uterine lining, force it to get a period, all of those different things. And that's just not true. Instead, what we need to start asking is, body, what do you need in order to feel nourished, in order to feel so safe in putting these resources towards making a baby because it is a very energetic process. And from an evolutionary standpoint, if your body doesn't feel safe or ready to conceive a baby, then somewhere along that cascade of hormones and signals, there's gonna be something that is disconnected. And it doesn't mean that your body is broken or can't do this, it literally just means that it's protecting you from dumping all of this energy into something that you might not be able to do. Now the really great thing here is that when you change the environment, the inner environment, the outer environment, that is when your physiology changes. And so that is exactly what I'm gonna show you here today and go through these three fertile ingredients that you need in order to conceive your baby and optimize your fertility. And so this is really gonna be for you if you have been plateaued on your fertility journey for more than three months, if you have failed past treatments in the past, if you have had a miscarriage or multiple chemical pregnancies in the past, and you are just really trying to figure out why this is happening and how to heal your body in order to optimize your fertility and get pregnant. This training is going to be for you. So let's dive in to each of these fertile elements. And as a little bonus, at the end of this video, I'm also going to go into some common fertility struggles, things like recurrent miscarriages, and ovulation, low progesterone, and I'm really gonna show you how that pertains to what missing ingredients. So be sure to watch until the end so that you can identify where in your fertility journey you are struggling, and that will be able to identify exactly which ingredients you're missing. So let's dive in. So the first ingredient that you need for optimal fertility is strong, consistent, and predictable ovulation. Now, ovulation is necessary on so many different levels because we need that egg in order to be fertilized and create an embryo. Now, for ovulation to happen, there must be this beautiful, synchronized, step-by-step -step process, and it all starts in the brain. Yep, ovulation starts in the brain. And what your brain is doing is actually testing your inner and outer environment and making sure that it is safe to put all of these resources in to get pregnant. So that's gonna look like 
your stress levels, the stress levels you are perceiving, as well as those physical stress levels. For example, if you are internalizing a lot of pressure at work to get certain projects done, or if you are exercising or you are training for a mountain trail run, those are two levels of stress that your brain is going to be monitoring and making sure, is this over what we can handle? alongside putting resources towards a baby. Now it's also going to look at your nutrient sufficiencies or deficiencies. This looks like both the storage of the macronutrients and micronutrients in your body, as well as the total amount of calories coming in versus going out. Now <laughs> your body is this black box where there's a lot of complex metabolic equations going on inside and it's not as simple as in equals out, for energy, but in simple terms, let's just call it that. So if we are not eating enough of the right things coming into our body, and maybe we're expending too much energy, then your body is gonna sense that it is not safe. Or perhaps you're eating the wrong things and it's causing a lot of inflammation in your body, and that is also triggering this stress response, then that is also going to tell your body that, nope, we're just not ready for ovulation. We're not ready to put all of these resources towards getting pregnant because we have an internal fire going on that we are trying to put out. Okay, so that's really the big picture of what's going on now. When we dial way in of what dictates a consistent, predictable, strong ovulation, what it really comes down to is hormone balance. So once we get the okay from your brain, it's gonna send that signal towards your ovaries. We call this FSH and it's going to tell your ovary to start to mature those follicles. And there are hundreds of little follicles that start to mature, but ultimately one is chosen as the dominant follicle that will release the egg. And LH, luteinizing hormone, is the hormone sent from the brain, again, to tell that dominant ovary to release the egg. That event of releasing the egg is what we call ovulation. Now, there are a couple sneaky factors that affect ovulation that you're likely not aware of. The very first is unstable blood sugar. And most of us think that unstable blood sugar is coming from overeating carbohydrates, but in fact, it can also come from skipping meals or skipping meals and replacing them with caffeine and overconsumption of caffeine in general, really high stress, so that physical stress or that mental and emotional stress. And then of course, the consumption of a lot of high glycemic index foods. So for someone who is just trying to be healthy, right, this can look like waking up, not really feeling hungry, skipping breakfast, or just having something quick like half a banana, and then going right into her coffee. And we have, you know, some sugar-free creamer, fat-free creamer, and then we go into lunch, and maybe we have a meeting over lunch, or we're working through lunch, and then 2 p.m. rolls around and we're starving. And we packed a salad for lunch, but your body doesn't want a salad at this point because its blood sugar is gone through so many ups and downs through that morning because you're skipping meals, you're adding a bunch of caffeine in, you are going to start to crave things like the pizza in the break room or the donuts in the hallway. And that is when we start to get into trouble. And I see this happen a lot of my really health conscious, high achieving women because they are trying so hard to be healthy, but what ends up happening is that they self-sabotage. So they over restrict and then that causes them to over consume later in the day when we're over consuming it can feel really out of control because our hormones are just needing to put sugar back into our body so we're going to reach for things like pizza and donuts and cookies and the candy jar and little chocolate chips that was my weakness and the way that imbalanced blood sugar actually affects ovulation is through the mechanism of insulin so if you want to get your insulin tested and see where your numbers are at because you are not ovulating, this would be really, really helpful to see. If your insulin is really high, 
then that likely means that that is the cause of your irregular ovulation or no ovulation at all especially if you are having some of those blood sugar symptoms. Another big factor that affects ovulation is leaky gut and inflammation. They kind of go hand in hand. So when we are living in a high stress state, we might be reaching for some convenience foods, some packaged foods, we're relying on those quite a bit in our diet things like frozen dinners, granola bars and protein bars and protein shakes, 100 calorie snack packs, getting lunch and dinner out, all of these things start to really add up in terms of our processed food, chemical preservative, and toxic load on our body. Those things just start to break down the integrity of our very delicate, beautiful gut lining. And so when our gut lining loses its integrity, it goes from this beautiful, tight-knit, tight junction of cells into these kind of gaping holes. You can think of inflammation of your gut lining as, you know, inflammation on your skin where it's really hot, red, itchy, and if it gets really bad, you know, maybe there's some sores on there and it's trying to heal and it's kind of scabby. That's how you can picture your the inside of your gut lining. And when that happens, there is food that is coming from your digestion, from that food that you've eaten, and entering into the circulation of your blood into your body directly. And when that happens, the toxic load and inflammation increases systemically all over your body. And that's going to directly affect that brain ovary connection. It's also going to cause a lot of imbalances in your estrogen and progesterone hormones because we're increasing a lot of that cortisol. So point of the matter is, is pay attention to the kinds of foods that you are eating. And I know this can be really hard and seem like a big ask, but if a lot of your foods are coming from processed, packaged things, even if they're claiming to be a health food, this could be leading to a lot of leaky gut, a lot of inflammation. So again, if your ovulation isn't happening, then this could definitely be another reason why. And then the final factor that really affects ovulation is your nutrient sufficiencies. So I touched on this already, but if you are someone who has a really high stress job and you're exercising a lot, or maybe you're training for a CrossFit competition or half marathon and you're expending a lot of energy, meanwhile, you're trying to watch what you eat, you could be affecting your brain ovary connection again and telling your brain that we just have way too much going on. We're literally running for our life, right? Exercise might feel good, but maybe your mind-body connection is sensing that it is actually scary and it's a lot of stress and we're in survival mode. And because of this, it can really disrupt that brain ovary connection. So I've talked a lot about what disrupts ovulation, but I haven't told you what looks like a regular healthy ovulation. Ideally, when we are thinking about trying to conceive, we want to optimize our ovulation as much as possible. And really what we can do is look at when you are ovulating. The method that I use is really simple. It's tracking your basal body temperature along with observing your cervical mucus. Really what we ought to understand is that ovulation is happening somewhere between day 13 and day 16. If it falls a day before or after, you're in the safe zone. I don't want you to get too hung up on this being perfect, but more as an observation to know, am I ovulating way before that, way after that, or is it happening in that time frame? If it is happening in that time frame, frame, then I would say you're good to go on this fertile ingredient. If it's not, then we need to see what is going wrong. Are you not ovulating at all? Or are you ovulating and it's before that ideal window? Or are you ovulating and it's after that ideal window? And each of those three differences will tell us something different about what your body needs. And I'm not going to go into those each individually in this video, but be sure to subscribe to this channel so that you know when I create a video detailed about each one of those balances of ovulation and exactly what you can do in order to heal it. Okay, so the second fertile ingredient that you need is optimal egg and sperm quality. 
Now you might not know this, but your egg quality is actually dependent on the quality and quantity of mitochondria in those egg cells and sperm cells. And really what determines the health of your mitochondria is the ratio between oxidants and antioxidants in your body. Because really what's happening is those antioxidants are protecting the fragile chromosomes within the eggs and within the sperm. You also need so much energy from these mitochondria in order to conceive life in order for the sperm to meet the egg. Extremely high energetic processes that are happening and they need mitochondria, the powerhouses of the cell, in order to do this seamlessly. So factors that are affecting your egg and sperm quality, probably the top three are going to be the total inflammation in your body. So we talked a little bit about leaky gut and eating a lot of processed foods. Eating a lot of high sugar foods can also increase insulin, increase inflammation in your body. So when you have a lot of inflammation in your body, antioxidants go towards quenching that instead of going towards your egg and sperm quality. The second thing is the amount of antioxidant rich foods that you're eating. I also like to call these phytonutrients. So things that are coming from whole foods, not just not just vegetables and fruits, but also animal products, eggs, dairy, beef, chicken, wild game, etc. But the key here is that they need to be coming from organic, pasture-raised, pasture-fed, pasture-finished animals. And the reason being is that in most animal industries, in the late part of its life cycle, it gets transferred to, say, a feedlot and fed a lot of corn, grains, to increase their body weight to sell at a higher weight to make more money. Now the issue with this is if this animal is going to gorge itself on all these highly inflammatory foods the six months before it's butchered, then you're accumulating a lot of those inflammatory fats, a lot of omega-6s and not so many omega-3s. Omega-3s, as you know, is a very potent antioxidant. Another factor affecting egg and sperm quality is toxin exposure coupled with poor liver detoxification. So both of these things are usually going hand in hand because we're getting a lot of toxins into our body through plastics, hair products, body products, beauty products, a lot of the furniture in our home, air pollution in the cities that we live, along with poor phytonutrient density, right? Because we're not getting that beautiful whole food in all of the time. And so we don't have the phytonutrients that are responsible in the liver to detoxify those toxins. So we have a lot of toxins and we don't have the detoxification power. And because of that, we have a high accumulation of toxins in our body. And these toxins are very reactive. We call them reactive oxygen species. And the reason is because anything that they come into contact with, they react with them and oxidize them. Whenever you oxidize something, think of the chemical reaction of rusting. If you've ever seen steel rust, that is because it is being oxidized. You can think of your body almost rusting in a way on the inside, your sperm cells rusting, your egg cells rusting because of this oxidation process. Now, one of the ways that you can tell if you have poor egg or sperm quality is that if you are coming up against a lot of reoccurrent chemical pregnancies or very early miscarriages, if your partner gets a sperm analysis and it's a very poor morphology, that is definitely something that you want to look into. So unfortunately, there really isn't a test that you can get for egg quality. However, you can get your AMH levels tested, where AMH is that hormone that is produced from the outer layers of the follicle. And it's not really telling us the quality of the eggs, but it is somewhat telling us your ovarian reserve. Now, I have my own opinions about this test, and 
how it is overused in telling women that they are running out of time and they need donor egg when in reality that might not be true but right now that's really all we have for egg quality now there are other ways to test for your overall systemic inflammation and making sure that your inflammatory markers are low and your antioxidant markers are high so there's a roundabout indirect way to make sure that that is happening. Okay, so the third fertile ingredient that you need for optimized fertility is a stable uterine lining. Now, oftentimes this is overlooked, especially when you're trying naturally. This is something that is looked at through an ultrasound if you're going through an IUI or IVF process. But ultimately, this is so important. Even if you have perfect egg and sperm quality, even if you time intercourse perfectly during your fertile window when you ovulate, if you don't have a stable uterine lining, that little embryo cannot implant into the lining of your uterus. Now, there are so many different factors that may be affecting the growth of your uterine lining, but the most prominent ones are your levels of estrogen and levels of progesterone. Estrogen is this growth hormone. It is signaling to the uterine lining to grow, to proliferate, to get nice and thick and juicy and send all of these all of this blood and blood vessels and nutrients to that area of your body. Then progesterone comes into after ovulation in order to stabilize that uterine lining. In fact, if you look at this underneath a microscope, it, it actually looks like the uterine cells are almost spiraling in to the uterine wall in order to stabilize this uterine lining. Again, this is so important because we want that fertilized egg to be able to implant into a really luscious, but not too luscious, stable uterine lining in order to ground itself there for the duration of the first trimester. Really the easiest way to tell if you have a stable uterine lining is to look at your luteal phase. Your cycle is split up into basically two phases separated by ovulation and your period. So you get your period and then you go through follicular phase, then you ovulate, and then you go through luteal phase. Luteal phase is usually 10 to 14 days. The closer it is to 14 days, the better, because that typically means that you have more progesterone being secreted by your ovary and you have that stable uterine lining that you need. Now, if you have a luteal phase that is less than 10 days, this is probably signifying that you have low progesterone. And the best way to know is to get tested on about day 21 of your cycle, maybe even a little bit sooner, essentially seven days after you ovulate is when you're gonna to wanna to test for progesterone. And then you can see how that relates to where you should be in the luteal phase on that day. You actually don't even need testing to see what your progesterone levels are doing because going back again to that way I am charting my fertility with the basal body temperature and the cervical mucus, when we measure the basal body temperature, you're going to see a plateau during the follicular phase at a lower temperature, usually around 97 degrees. And then after ovulation, it's going to bump up and then stay plateaued at about 98 degrees. So it's usually about a 0.5 to one degree change in temperature between the two phases. And that is when you know you ovulate, by the way. So you can also look and see how high is my temperature. You can also look at the pattern. Did my temperature spike immediately and stay elevated or did it have this low gradual increase and then stayed high for maybe a couple days and then came down right after? Because as soon as that temperature comes down, that is when you get your period. So this is another way to really understand your cycle. And again, subscribe to my channel if you want to know more about this because in future videos, I'm going to break down exactly how you can decipher your chart and even how to chart to begin with for you beginners. So definitely subscribe if you want to be notified when that stuff comes out. So those are the three fertile ingredients. Now, the caveat here is that these are the three physical ingredients. 
When it comes to fertility, there is this invisible force that tends to hold it all together. And we call that your creative feminine power energy. And this energy is something that is cultivated from within and it is the intention behind every action that you take. So feminine energy looks a lot like trusting in your body, listening to and taking action from your intuition, authenticity and standing in your own self-worth, leaning back and receiving, and then just in general, this very creative vibe. So I know a lot of you here listening are like, I'm not any of those things. And trust me, I wasn't either when I started my fertility journey. I was a former chemical engineer. I was a CrossFit competitor. I was all things masculine. And this was hindering me from really getting pregnant because I didn't know how to integrate my feminine qualities into who I was. And we're gonna be talking so much more about that on my channel because really what we specialize in is combining that physiology of fertility along with the energetics of fertility and it's why our clients have such amazing results not just getting pregnant but again elevating who they are becoming and just stepping into who they truly are taking back their power taking back their confidence and owning their authenticity and who they are and it just sets them up for such a seamless powerful pregnancy birth early motherhood and beyond. Okay, so I promised you that I would let you know what kind of problems could go wrong when one of these fertile ingredients are missing. And here's the thing that I want you to know. If you have one of these problems, it's not because your body is broken. You would never blame a flashlight that you found on the top shelf of a closet that you hadn't seen for over a year you wouldn't blame it for being broken, right? You would just change out the batteries. And that's exactly the kind of perspective and shift that I want you to have here with your own body. A huge part of fertility is asking your body what it needs and giving it what it needs. This isn't about fixing because there's nothing that is broken, my love. This is simply an imbalance. It's your body trying to make the best of our outer and inner environment. And so with that understanding, let's get into it. So the biggest issue that you may be experiencing right now is recurrent chemical pregnancies or recurrent miscarriages. Okay, so what this usually means is that you have the ovulation ingredient and you have the stable uterine lining ingredient, right? So you have regular cycles, you have that beautiful luscious 14 day luteal phase, you know that you're ovulating on day 12 to 16, you're timing intercourse in that fertile window, yet you keep coming up against recurrent early miscarriages. This is usually because the missing ingredient is poor egg or sperm quality. In fact, the number one reason for recurrent miscarriages is poor egg and sperm quality. And despite what you might have read on the internet or what your doctor has said, there is so much that you can do in order to increase and optimize your egg and sperm quality. Because here is the thing. And yes, even if you are over 35 and you're in your 40s, this can be done. Because here's the thing, egg quality is not only just dependent on your age. It depends on this 90 day maturation phase before ovulation or before spermogenesis. Both your egg and sperm go through this 90 day period roughly where it is maturing in your body. This means it is being held close and concealed from and held close before that. And then it is released into your body and it has this 90 day phase where it is exposed to everything in your inner environment. So it's going to be exposed to things like cortisol and inflammation and toxins. So that's why it's so important to look at all of those things that affect egg and sperm quality if this is something that you are going through. Now there's actually a lot involved in increasing your egg and sperm quality and we make it so simple for you inside of my program, Holistic Fertility Method, 
through various different strategies like increasing your liver detoxification capacity, improving your phytonutrient sufficiency, healing your leaky gut, and quenching internal inflammation. And also very specific key supplementation that we can just have the final cherry on top to really boost that quality. And we have seen dramatic results with our clients, both female and male, increase their AMH levels, improve their sperm analysis, and ultimately break free from that reoccurring miscarriage pattern and finally conceive their healthy, happy baby. Now, the second thing that can go wrong is what is known as unexplained infertility. So this is typically when you have that ingredient ovulation and optimized egg and sperm quality. So you are tracking your cycle, you know when you're ovulating, your timing intercourse during your fertile window, you've gotten all of the tests done, your sperm analysis came out with flying colors, you have adequate ovarian reserve, everything checks out normal, yet nothing is happening. You've never seen a positive pregnancy test, nothing is happening. You may have even had unsuccessful IUIs or IVFs in the past where no implantation is happening. And because of this, you're usually left with that unsettling diagnosis of unexplained infertility. Now, usually where I see this most is that type A high achiever perfectionist personality where they have so much going on internally and externally that there just aren't enough resources to put towards actual implantation of the embryo. And a lot of times this comes back to our progesterone levels. Not always, but typically when we have a lot of energy being expended and going outward, it is because we're living a very high stress, high pressure lifestyle. And it's actually more than just running ourselves ragged every single week through work and trying to be perfect with our diet and exercise routine and now trying to stay up on all of this fertility stuff. That is a lot, yes, but honestly, this usually stems all the way back from childhood. And it's this conditioning that we learned from our parents, school, coaches, that we had to be the best in order to be accepted. Or we had to prove that we were capable in order to be loved, or that we had to achieve and get to the next level in order to feel worthy. And so it's through these patterns and these conditions and these rules that have really set us on this trajectory of overworking, over hustling, and burning out in nearly every single thing that we do. And when you multiply this out across two, three, sometimes even four decades, that is a lot of accumulation of stress on the body. And what I found with working with my clients is because I attract a lot of these women in because I am that woman is that a lot of times we don't even realize how stressed we really are because it's how we've always been. It's our set point. There is no other way of being. And so this can really feel like a punch to the gut when you hear this because it's almost like, well, I spent all of this time working so hard trying to prove that I can do this, trying to be the best, and now you're telling me that even that's not good enough? And so it can feel really, really triggering, and I know from experience. But just be aware that you might have some old programs and conditioning that are keeping your mind body in survival mode. And when you're in survival mode, especially chronically, then you're not in fertile mode. Inside of my program, Holistic Fertility Method, we actually have an entire pillar called reframing your stress response. And it's all about getting to those subconscious patterns and conditioning and limiting beliefs and rewriting them from the subconscious level. And we're almost like reprogramming your body how to rest, relax, let go, and rejuvenate. You might think that this takes a lot of time, but this isn't like talk therapy. This isn't like traditional habit change. When we switch out programming in the subconscious, it is like that, a ripple effect across your entire body. And we see things like better sleep, increased energy, just more fun in life, more rest, more relaxation, the ability to actually take time for yourself and prioritize your self-care. 
not because you had more willpower to try to force yourself to do it, but because it was just a natural thing that you do for yourself because you're not in that survival mode anymore. And the third thing that could go wrong is no ovulation or irregular ovulation. Now, this is when you have that optimal sperm and egg ingredient, as well as the uterine lining, you know, as far as we could tell. But that ovulation ingredient is what we are missing most. And this is happening when you can't really confirm if you're ovulating or if you are, when it's actually happening. And the most common place that I see this is women who have been diagnosed with PCOS or polycystic ovarian syndrome. That is typically when we see really long cycles and irregular cycles where the cycle is longer than 35 days or you're only getting a period like two months out of a year. And when you do, they're really, really, really heavy really, really, really painful. Now the opposite is you're not ovulating at all. And this just looks like never getting a period. Now you can also not get a period at all with PCOS, but just to keep things simple, let's call it irregular ovulation and no ovulation. And the reason why is because the cause of each is very, very different. So with PCOS, essentially what is happening is that your body is actually trying to orchestrate ovulation multiple times during one cycle, yet it just can't get over that hump. And the reason being is because of a disproportionate ratio of FSH and LH. And the reason why these become disproportionate is usually because of high insulin. Remember earlier in the video, I was talking about how blood sugar and insulin can really affect ovulation. This is how it typically plays out with women who have PCOS. As far as no ovulation whatsoever, this typically happens after coming off a birth control pill. If that isn't what is going on, then it's probably something going on with the brain ovary connection. A lot of times I see this when we're overstressed, over exercising, under eating, disordered eating, things like that. So each three of those causes are obviously going to have very different protocols in order to heal and regulate ovulation to a more consistent and predictable pattern. But inside of my program, Holistic Fertility Method, Method, we get to the bottom of what exactly is causing that anovulation so then we can have the correct protocol and we're not just throwing everything in in order to try to get pregnant and we're also not having to go through unnecessary fertility treatments either because we took that first step to understand why is this happening and what does my body need in order to come back to balance? Okay, so that was a lot of information and I hope you were able to take notes. Definitely replay this as many times as you need to really understand which ingredient you may be missing and how it may be showing up in your fertility journey. Now, if you want the exact strategy in order to heal those imbalances that you are experiencing and bring your body back into balance and optimize fertility from the inside out, working both with the physiological components and that energetic piece, aligning your mind, body, and soul to optimized fertility, then please go ahead and click the link below and check out Holistic Fertility Method to learn more about our unique framework. We have helped women get pregnant from all different kinds of pre-existing diagnoses, age, whether they're experiencing multiple miscarriages or failed past treatments, not ovulating at all after coming off of hormonal birth control. We have seen it all and this framework applies to every single piece. The thing is you are unique, your fertility story is unique, but when we apply it to this framework, we are able to distill exactly what is going on for you, get to the bottom of why you're unable to conceive and carry to term, and then give you that exact protocol of what you need in order to optimize your fertility. So if that sounds like something that you wanna learn more about, you can click the link below in my description and just check it out and learn more. And if you really feel pulled and called, you can apply so that I can get to know you and your unique story a little bit more and just make sure that our program is going to work for you. As an added bonus, you'll also receive our exclusive private training all about our unique methodology, what that looks like when you apply it to your fertility journey, hope and inspiration within those as well. All right, mama, I hope that this allowed you to gain some clarity on what to do next. And if you ever have any questions, just hit the comments below and I will be replying. Bye.